and welcome to today's video uh, part three this is the painting guide and well we're going to be using the broken boy or as i like to call it the rent boy and this is a first for me i'm using some paint masks to do all the national insignia and stuff and in this case i'm using the crafting well masks must admit these are fantastic so please check out their page traditionally what you normally use is a standard paint set but in my case like a knobhead i haven't got that set so what i'm having to use is my own ideas and my own thoughts and i thought of using x4 xf8 and number 11 guns to mix together and funny enough i don't actually use the number 11 for some reason it's just x4 and xf8 is not far off the right color i think to be honest with you but either way and with that i'm using mr color leveling thinner um i find it to leave a, a much more smoother finish and what i do is i mix the paint outside of the color cup the reason being is because if you try and mix it in the color cup the chances are that the last few millimeters down in the bottom where the airbrush needle is um, and down into the nozzle you're not going to be able to mix that so that's the reason for doing it this way to be honest with you it's just my way and what i do is sort of put it around the decal as you can see i've already tried to mix some colors already but either way that is the best what i can do and then here we go so painting it's painting literally paint over the area where you're going to put the masks that's the sort of general rule of thumb um i did sort of cock up on the wing where i didn't actually put enough paint on there but either way if you just cover over where you're going to mask you're not going to have an issue And with that all painted, I am just putting the decals up just to see the colour. And as you can see, it's not a bad match, to be honest with you. <laughs> but either way, so best idea is to look at the instructions and see where all these are going to go, as you can see there. And what we're going to be using, as I said earlier, is the Crafting Well paint masks, as you can see there. Um, done by Lisa, which is uh, Nigel's missus. Uh, Nigel's from the My Modeling World and let's face it Lisa can put you to shame really can put you to shame she knows everything about you know numbers and letter sizes roundel sizes and all this that and the other and she sort of asked me what did I want and she was saying all these numbers and all this that and the other to me and I'm like it's going right over my head and I didn't have a clue but as you can see from the actual mass, they cut really nicely. And I've got two extra mass bits there for underneath the wing. And I've actually got the shark mouth thingy for the... And I'm putting it on the fuel tank, so fuck you. So let's crack on with the masking, shall we? And I've already put two on there. So this is doing actually the fuselage one, I think. And what I'm doing here is taking the outer sheet off so I know what I'm taking off and what I'm doing. I might not need to do this, but I'm doing it anyway. So I might be doing it wrong. I know Nigel or Lisa might say, what you doing? But either way. So I'm taking the outer piece on. If it sticks slightly to the one of the inner rings, ooh, uh, um, what you can do is just put your finger down or thumb down or whatever and just pull it off like so. And it does actually come off quite satisfyingly. Let's, let's face it, um, finally got it off there. Now, best thing to do is just keep it on a tool. Oh God, the innuendos again. And what I'm doing here is looking at the sheet and just making sure I know where it's gonna sit. So it's gonna sit around about, if I get the right tool. Come on, Rob, crack on, catch up boy. Come on, there we go. So now basically what I want it to do is sit between that sort of round window there and on that panel line at the top and that sort of panel line at the bottom there where the red round will goes that's the sort of ideal placement where i want to go so i've actually got some panel lines for it to follow 
and here we go so if you sort of slowly line it up you can actually take it off i had to take it off a couple of times before and as you can see i'm just making sure that it's the same on both sides and just line it up in one area don't try and stick it all down in one go because you will be into a nightmare and then slowly place it down don't try and sort of get it down all as a wanna just place it down in one area and then push it down again as you can see i'm doing the same on the wing not a problem here just lining it up as you can see and just making sure that it's up against that panel line up against that edge and then you can push it down like so and if you missed it i am just basically trying to do the other wing and I need about three eyes for this one so i'm looking at where i'm placing this looking at the other wing and looking at the instructions at the same time because it's opposite weight and then you just run your finger around and it's done so for the inner white i'm using traffic white in this case um c101 I must admit it's got a nice look to it and i'm blaming lenny for this one but as you can see also i've not masked around the outside don't need to um and i'm just spraying base bait well I say basically, um, there's not, it's not rocket science, it's just a case of painting and then cutting back to air and drying as much as you can. But don't flood the area because the chances are you are going to have a build up of paint and that's the only downside to that. Um, so you do need to do it to the edges but I would concentrate in the middle and the actual overspray would go to the edge if you know what I mean and then you can build up the edge at the end. That's what I kind of do anyway. So, yeah, looking quite nice there. And hopefully this sh shouldn't take too long. Now, with that done, it's a case of putting the inner ring in. Oh, God. Ah, there you are. <clears throat> well, that's quite enough of that. But either way, um, again, I'm using the same sort of idea is using... Um, while I'm using ear tweezers, you can use a knife blade or whatever you want just to take the edge and I'm hooking this in. So I'm hooking it in by just placing it on the outer mask, just on the edge there and placing down. I must admit it took me two attempts to get this one right. A couple of them took me first try at it. So you do get actually better and it does fit into the middle. There's no gaps all the way around that's that's what i found anyway so as you can see i'm pulling it back off because i'm a knob and there we go i try again which this time it actually goes down i think oh and crikey i've managed to do it in one or two i will and then what i have to do is again rub my finger around the ring oh god right just gloss over that another trick that what you can do it, especially in my case what I found was you can start off because you've masked it off is spray off the area just to make sure your paint's running and then just start filling in and I'm using um, I think it's X7 um, Tamiya Red for this one um, I'm not actually showing you that for some reason and I don't know why I do apologize and X7 I found to be quite a better match. I was going to use Traffic Red from Attacker, but it was too orange. So I'm using this one instead. And I must admit, looking at the roundel in the background, at the, at the top of the screen there, it does look the same. And as you can see, there we go. It does actually look pretty decent. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, to be honest with you. Now, it's a case of just masking and repeating all the way through. Um, and one good tip is if you've got a mask and you've already sort of masked it in a way in a fashion that you can just pull the whole mask off in one and then you can just place it in another area which I've done there and just place it back on. Now with the masking done of at least the roundels anyway and I must admit I'm very pleased with the way it came out and that is testimony to how well the masks are to be honest with you they are fantastic um, and I'm going to explain one thing I forgot anyway but either way this is the paint set I'm using attackers orange line and I'm using uh, sky color uh, extra dark sea gray dark sea gray and medium sea gray as you can see there so first off we'll start with the sky 
which I'm mixing again outside the colour cup, which is the best way of doing it. You can mix it to whatever standard you want, but I do a bit more than sort of full fat milk, um, more than 50-50, so I get a good feel. And as you can see, I'm actually testing the spray pattern out on the sheet. I know it's on paper, but it should work. We're finally on to the painting stage, uh, well, the base coat anyway. And as previously mentioned, we're using the sky colour, which is really nice to paint, to be honest with you. So, general rule of thumb is, for me anyway, I don't, or well, I keep it random, shall I say. I keep it random, front to back, left to right, and I generally follow some pictures, reference guides, whatever, you, and I look at where most of the wear or weathering is going to be on the aircraft, and I sort of keep to that area. So I'd probably paint less paint there and more in general areas where there's not going to be any wear and tear. It's quite self-explanatory, to be honest with you. So I'm going to shut up, um, sit back and relax and watch me cock some paintwork up. So cheerio. And with all that done on the sky, I have masked the kit up ready for the next colour. And as you can see, I've used the sheeting, the actual bagging that the spruce came in. Um, I've not shown you this part because it's about two hours of masking and you don't want to see that. Either way, so I'm going to start off with the dark sea grey, then a bit of extra dark sea grey, and then come in with some medium sea grey. So as you can see, I'm just whacking the colour down. Again, I'm going to use the same principle that I used for masking the national insignia. So generally less on the actual border. And I've already sprayed it. 
Um, so now I'm coming in with the extra dark sea grey as like a panel shine, panel line, panel shine. What the hell is that? Panel lining, um, pre-shading sort of effect. But either way, I'm going to shut up and stop talking crap. I'll leave you to this paintwork. Cheerio. Oh yeah, I forgot. Uh, one thing of note on my version anyway is that this part is really weathered and worn. So I've just gone straight to medium sea grey and I am building it up. And you'll see how I do mottling um, or the way of doing it anyway. Um, so again, I'm going to shut up, you watch this bit and enjoy yourself. Cheerio. <music> This is the bit that I really enjoy, the demasking part. I very much like this bit. Um, this is the point where you find out if your pre-shading, post-shading, weathering has actually matched the top and the bottom colours. So, uh, squeaky bum time on that one. But either way, um, I must admit, it did actually come out quite well. I got one little tiny bit of O-spray, but either way, it's not too bad. One thing I did forget to mention earlier, and I'm mentioning it now, is that I used a primer coat on this one before the base colours went on. That being uh, Mr. Leveling Thinner and Mr. Surfacer 1000. So, using attackers, don't forget to use a primer coat. It's vital, especially with using uh, Tamiya tape the way that I have, just whacking it down, to be honest with you. Now with all the major masking and paintwork out of the way, now it's time to do all the code letters and everything. So what I've done here, and I've done two lots of lines because I'm not quite sure which side it was going to be, and I've drawn a line using a ruler and a local pencil just to draw straight lines at either side, right up against the edges of the mask itself. And this helps me, as you can see here, lining it up with the panel line. And because it's a straight line, you can see that it would be straight all the way down. And as you can see there, and I must admit, um, this one went down first time on camera, actually, and it normally doesn't on camera. The other one didn't. Um, it was being a bit of a little bugger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you with me demasking all that right in there and painting it a attacker black. So cheerio.
And with all that masking done, it's more masking. Great. So, as you saw there, I'm using AK Interactive's matte aluminium on a, well, the original grey primer base. Now, the reason why I'm using matte aluminium on, on the grey primer base is because I don't want it too shiny. Um, you look at period photos and it's not as shiny as what you thought it would be. Either way, um, so what I'm doing is I'm building up slowly and coming in from different angles. If you try and do it from one angle um, and spray it all in one go, the chances are you're just going to build up too much paint and it's going to run like water. So, yeah, just build it up slowly. That's all I can tell you and just keep on going round. And with all that done, it's a case of doing it exactly the same on the landing gear. So just keep going round, building it up nice and slowly and keep coming back to air because again, you don't want to build it too much paint up. Um, nothing really major to talk about on that one. And there we have it. That is the painted wheel wells. And I must admit, I did get a little tiny bit of overspray on the bottom i don't know if you can see it but either way i am pleased the way it's come out so yeah looking very nice also what i've done is painted the prop black so i've used an attacker something like a night black or something like that i can't quite remember but either way um very easy to paint black to be honest with you and what i've also done is i've painted the tips white and then yellow so i've not shown that because it's painting it white and yellow and there we have it i've painted all the various bits so i've painted the prop blade tips as you can see they're painted in white and then painted them golden yellow with attackers and i've also painted as you can see here all the various bits white and then red and i used the same red that i used on the roundels to be honest with you so it's x7 tamiya and I'm finally pushing this bit down, which I've not glued on. I'm just going to leave it as is with some tweezers. And there we go, putting the final end piece on. And I must admit, it all does fit even just as good as it did before. Now I'm sticking the end prop on right onto its shaft, sticking it right on there and just making sure it doesn't come off the shaft because you don't want to fall off the end here. Uh, yeah. And then finally putting the front nose on for probably the final time. And it's not actually glued on there. And I must admit, it's all not glued on there. And I'm quite happy with the way that's come out. And now finally putting the front section in, which again always fits very snug and nice. And it's all square. So again, really happy with the way the paint's come out. And there we have it. That is the completed painting so i just want to say thank you for watching and i'll see you again next time cheerio